from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Dan Daly and Colleen Gray in Taxi. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. There is probably no profession in our country more maligned at one moment and eulogized the next than the taxi driver. He is sworn at by other drivers, immortalized because of his good deeds, and loved by no one but his mother. And in tonight's romantic comedy, Taxi, we will show you how one disgruntled tax cab driver was humanized by the hopeless search of a trusting Irish girl for our missing husband. And as our stars of this 20th century Fox screen gem, we present Dan Daly in his original role, co-starring with Colleen Gray. Now, Taxi, starring Dan Daly as Eddie Nielsen and Colleen Gray as Mary. This is the story of Eddie Nielsen, cab driver, New York City. And it begins early in the morning, just as Eddie's about to start another day. My, it's a nice day, Eddie. Just beautiful. It's a terrible day. Mom, even you by now should understand what a rainy day means in a taxi cab business. A nice steady rain that drips and drips and drips, never lets up. I gotta make a payment on the cab today. Ain't even a cloud. Shine, the whole world is happy. But you don't approve. Oh, Eddie got married. That's the whole trouble with you. That's why you're always such a grouch. Not today, Mom, please. I'm not in the mood. Why not? It's time. A man your age. Why do I want to go looking for trouble? Oh, a person can fall in love, can't they? Love, yeah, love. But you don't have to go to extremes and get married. Well, <laughs> you think there ain't no such thing, huh? It doesn't exist. Wait a minute. I begin to see the light. What? What's so important about supper tonight? Why must I suddenly be home on time? Who oh, said suddenly? I only mentioned... You know it. why? Because you're going to have that Mrs. Alberts and her daughter Florence coming over here. The one she's been trying to marry off for six years, that's why. No, don't knock her, Eddie. She's a very nice girl. And smart. She plays the piano. I don't care if she's a whole one-man band. I don't want her in the house when I come home. And if they just happen to drop in, I'm supposed to throw them out? Yeah, throw them out, because if you don't, I will. Mom, look, I'm satisfied just the way I am. I don't want to get entangled, understand? Okay, okay. Oh, entangled. Don't aggravate me, Mom, please. I got to pay for the cab. Well, I have enough headaches. All right, goodbye, Eddie. Now, you be careful. Yeah, see you later, Mom. Mr. Eddie Nielsen, the owner-driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind a conversation. Rizzo, just fill up the gas well, tank. Well, the high book at the big boss. Hey, Oni, you going to make that payment today? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Mr. Yeah. Nielsen, you're going to have to do. we got to know it's important. We're making a pool, see? You got 14 more payments to make on the hack, right? So what? We're making book on the one you're going to miss, that's all. Yeah, <laughs> we're just checking up, that's all. Go ahead, check your vultures, eat your hearts out. Just get away from the cab, you dirty it up. Oh, oh, we'll dirty it up. on the boxes. Nielsen is a louse. But he's got a good side, too. He loves everything nice and clean. A bunch of bums. You think like bums. You act like bums. You dress like bums. That's why you're still driving for the BJ Taxi Cab Corp. And that's why I own my own cab. Don't cross no bridges, Mr. Nielsen. You don't own it yet. I'll own it. You don't need to lose no sleep. I'll get out of my way. Boy, that Nielsen's got a heart like a rock. He should have been a flat. Flat, but he should have been a traffic car. Was you laying in the gutter dying? He wouldn't give you a smile. You know, there's only one thing he ain't mad at. That crummy hack he thinks he owns. Yeah. Well, Mary, I guess you're all set. The mate's found a taxi cab for you. That's it there over on the dock. Oh, thank you, Captain. Now, here's your landing card from the immigration office. And here, a little advance on your wages. Oh, now what would I be wanting with such a lot of boodle as that? Five dollars? It isn't as much as you think. New York isn't quite the same as Dublin, but it's more than enough for the cab fare. Oh, it is a wonderful great city, sir. 
Just remember to be back here by 5 o'clock. Oh, yes, sir, I will, I will. Uh, now, about finding the place, sir. Ah, you'll have no trouble at all. Just tell the taxi driver and he'll take you there. Oh, thank you, Captain. That I will. Good luck, Mary. Now, that was Sutton Place, you said, huh, lady? 89 Sutton Place South. New York City, Zone 22, New Hey, that's York. quite an accent you got there. Irish, ain't it? Aye, that it is. Great place, Ireland. Yes, ma'am. I, uh, you just come in? Oh, our ship made part this morning. Never been here before, huh? <laughs> well, bless the man with all his questions. Why, no, of course not. Oh, Sutton Place South. Well, that's quite a ride, lady. Is it no? Well, you just be taking me there all the same. Oh, don't worry. I will, lady. I will. We'll go by way of Coney Island and cut up to the Bronx, I think. You see, that way we save all the downtown traffic. Oh, that will be nice of you. Thank you. It's all right. Now, you just sit back and relax, lady. Enjoy the drive. Oh, thank you again. I'm sure I will. And over there, lady, that's Staten Island over there. I have never been across so many bridges and through so many tunnels in all my life. And, and, and we must go on a ferry boat? Yeah, well, I, that's the best way. Now, uh, that's New York straight ahead of us. Well, imagine that. I could have sworn those were the same tall buildings I saw from the deck of the ship before I got off. Yeah, well, all them skyscrapers, they all look alike. All right, ma'am, I'll have you at Sutton Place in 20 minutes. <laughs> I don't get it, lady. This year's 89 Sutton Place South, all right. Oh, but they're tearing down the building. There's nothing left to the place. You sure you got the right address? But I wrote to him here, and he answered my letters. Well, how long since you heard from him? Oh, six months. Six months? Lady, six months they turned New York upside down. Now, look, he's got friends, see? You give him a phone call, I'll tell you where he moved. But there's not a soul I'm acquainted with in all New York except Jim. Uh, and you, of course. Wait a minute. We are not acquainted. I'm just a driver of the hack. But you've been so kind to me. Kind? You give me an address, I take you where it is. I'm a guy who chases a dollar. All I want is my fare. And ye shall have it. Here. Wait a minute. This is only five bucks. Is it not enough? Lady, you see the meter? You see what it says? It says $12.20. Oh, uh, it seems I'm not very familiar with your currency, am I? What right are you got taking a cab when you can't afford it? But the captain said it would be more than enough. Do I tell the captain how much to charge for a boat ride? Oh, this world is full of chiselers. Well, you needn't take on so. You'll get your money. Yeah, who's going to give it to me? The man I'm looking for. Jim will pay you. Oh, sure. He lives in a joint that's torn down on the ground. Who's Jim, anyway? <sighs> Mr. James Turner. My husband. Some husband. Don't even write in six months. How do I know you even got a husband? Oh, don't be silly, man. We've been married for more than a year. Congratulations. Well, you wait here. See, I'm going down a corner. I'll get his phone number from information. Oh, thank you. Well, did you find it, Mr. Nielsen? Jim's phone number? Information, never heard of him. You're still batting a thousand. But, but what am I going to do? We're going to walk around the block. Around the block? At yeah, a store where I phoned, I asked about James Turner, 89 Sutton Place South. Well, he knows from nothing. But he tells me that janitor who used to work at 89 Sutton Place South is now working around the corner. So come on, we'll talk to Janet. So if we may talk to your husband, please, maybe he can tell us where we can find Mr. Turner. Mr. James Turner. Well, my hubby ain't here now, but I knew that Mr. Turner, a real fine gentleman, always laughing it up. Uh, and would you happen to know his new address, please? Gee, honey, I don't. He was always hightailing it off somewhere, Ireland and Paris and all them foreign places. Well, that's where he met me, in Ireland. Well, then you must be the one that sends the letters. What letters? Oh, wait a minute, I'll be right back. I know just where they are. What is your husband, a traveling salesman? Oh, no, it's a writer he is, selling stories to the magazines. Yeah, and what was he doing in Ireland? Oh, he came to Ardna Krishna to write about the ghost in the castle. Ghosts? What's he writing about ghosts for? Don't he like live people? Ardna Krishna's a lovely ghost. Very famous, too. Eight feet tall, uh, give or take an inch. You believe in ghosts and he writes about them. That's a wonderful foundation for a happy marriage. I found these when he moved out, so I just put them in this box here. Oh, my letters. 
Well, they just kept coming, honey, and I didn't know what else to do with them. Yeah, yes, yes, of course. Uh, uh, what would this be here with the letters? Oh, I found that too, honey. Just a pawn ticket is all. Let me look at it. Hock with Henry. Henry's hock shop. Oh, my 12 bucks, I'll see it my dreams. <laughs> well, I certainly hope you find Mr. Turner. Oh, I'll find him, all right. You may be sure of that. Let me get this straight. You crossed the whole ocean just to find a guy you haven't even heard from for six months? You think that's odd, the length of time? Odd? Why should I think it's odd? It's normal. Happens every day. Oh, where are we going now, please? A hock shop. Where else? That pawn ticket. Oh. I don't say I haven't wondered, Mr. Nielsen. Even been a bit worried, too. But it's in your heart, you know. The guy said you wonder why didn't he send for you? He was hard up, poor man. That's the reason why. Hard up? How much it cost to write a letter? Oh, but he did write. I've no doubt about it at all. Sure, he wrote, but you didn't get it. Exactly. The letters were kept away from me. It was me, Aunt Bridgie. What's your Aunt Bridgie got to do with it? Well, she runs a hotel in Ardnacrushna. And one day she comes to me and she says, we've an American tourist just arrived. Go up and air his rooms. Well, up I went, and there he was. Good day, he said, and what might your name be? Mary O'Shea, says I to him. Well, Mary O'Shea, he says, you're as pretty a girl as ever come down the road. So, one thing led to another, and, and in no time at all, to me utter and complete surprise, there he was with his arms around my waist. And at that precise moment, who walks in but me, Aunt Bridgie? Well, after that, she didn't trust him an inch. Your Aunt Bridgie's got more sense than you got. <laughs> when she found out that Jim and I were secretly married, well, that's when she sent me packing. So I just went on to Dublin. Yeah, where was your husband all this time? Oh, in the United States. He, he'd gone back by then. Uh, how long was he in your hometown, anyway? A week. A week? Most of the time with me. Walking in the hills. You mean to tell me you married a man you only knew a week? Mr. Nielsen, are there any rules about the time it takes to fall in love? It takes one minute to be born, less than that to die. And I had seven long days to fall in love. A day meets a guy and in five minutes ahead throws the oatmeal. Poof! It's like that she's stuck in him. <laughs> she marries him. And who suffers the consequences? Me, Eddie Nielsen, an innocent cab driver. All right, here's a hat. Get in. Oh, but, but the pawnbroker... I'll bribe you there. It's on me. It's my treat, okay? Well, you don't have to get angry, Mr. Nielsen. But all the same, thank you. And so we come here with a pawn ticket. Well, you got the address on him yet? Uh, James Turner, huh? Yeah, 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 I got it. 89 Sutton Place South. Oh, the same address. Ugh. Come on, Mrs. Turner. Get back to the cab. No, 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 wait. Please, could you show me what it was that he pawned? A lot of good that'll do. I guess I can dig it out for you. Oh, if he could only talk. If who could only talk? St. Anthony. Who? Open your eyes, man. There on the shelf. The little statue of St. Anthony. Who's he? Glory be, he's never even heard of him. So I'm missing something? He's a saint with a very special job. If you've lost something... He'll help you find it. Yeah, if he's such a help, how come there's so many lost and found apartments? Maybe it's a sign. A sign that I'll find Jim. Hooray. Well, I got it. It's an overcoat. Hey, let me see. Overcoat's got labels. Where'd he get it? What's that label say? Oh, it's no use. I remember this coat. Jim bought it at home in Ordner Krushner. Uh, thanks, mister. The lady's looking at the statue. Uh, why don't you buy it? Might bring you luck. Oh, sure, I'd love to. But he can't afford it. I'll make you a bargain. Two dollars. Two dollars must be stolen property. I'll give you a buck. One buck. Take it or leave it. All right, all right. Go on. Take it. <laughs> Come on. Let's go, Miss Turner. <gasps> the statue. Oh, thank you. Jimmy, I'll carry it. Oh, but it's not heavy. Jimmy. Well, what are you going to do? Find Jim. When? Today, tomorrow, next year? Oh, it has to be today. You see, I... I work on the ship. That's how I got my passage. But the ship sails at five o'clock, and I've, I've got to be there. You mean you can't even stay in the country? Oh, yes, I can. But to stay in this country, I need a husband. And I have one. So all I have to do is to find him. Sure, there's nothing to it. Mr. Nielsen, if we were trying to find him all by ourselves, I might be getting a little discouraged. But we're not alone anymore. There's somebody here I don't see. Like the ghost, maybe? I mean St. Anthony. Lady. Lady, believe me, I am not the kind of a guy who goes around knocking a saint, understand? But do you really think you can find your husband with a hunk of plaster that was made probably in Patterson, New Jersey? 
Mr. Nielsen, I'm afraid you're a man without faith. Faith, lady, I'm talking facts. Hey, uh, mister, mister. Mr. Mr. Stonebroker. While you're standing out here talking, I'm hanging up the coat again, and look what falls out of the pocket. So? A coat room check from a restaurant, Billy's Grill. That's a, a place Yeah, a... yeah, I know. It's a place the reporters hang out, reporters and writers. Maybe you can find some friends of his, huh? Somebody who knows where he is. Well, thanks, Mac. You've done us a favor. Well, this time, let's get back to the cab. You, you will take me there? Well, good will do. All morning we've been at this. What do we got to show for it? A bunch of letters and a hot saint. <laughs> so come on, won't do any good, but I'll take you. Just imagine, Mr. Nielsen. Imagine those nice people at the pub knowing me, Jim, and telling me where he's at. But they didn't tell you where he's at. They didn't know. All they gave you in Billy's Grill was the name of a publishing company. <sighs> me own husband writing a book and being paid for it. Now all we have to do is to talk to the publishing people and find out Jim's new address. Don't get your hopes up. How do you know it ain't another wild goose chase? Well, just plain as the light of day. They told us as much as the restaurant. Jim has buried himself away, working on his novel, trying to make a success of himself for my sake. You know what you need? What? A legal guardian. The trouble with you is you're too cheerful. My goodness me, Mr. Nelson, do you always carry on so? I bet the neighbors feel very sorry for your wife and children. What wife? What children? Who said anything about being married? You're not married. A lovely man like you. And why not? Why not? Because I ain't a sap, that's why not. Besides, I ain't got any time for it. Oh, well, now, you're just talking silly. Girls are the one thing there's always time for. The right one you've not been finding, that's all. Yeah, and I hope I never will. Ha! Listen to the man. What are we stopping for? You see that sign across the street? <gasps> Leggett and Millard, publisher. Good luck. You're not coming with me? What do you need me for? You're so sure you'll find him now. Oh, yes, of course I'll find him. Goodbye, Mr. Nielsen. Goodbye, lady. Take it easy. Wait. Could I please have your address? Then as soon as I see Jim and tell him how wondrous kind you've been to me, then he'll send you the money for the fare and everything. I just changed my mind. Come on, I'm going up there with you. <laughs> we'll return to Act Two of Lux Radio Theater in a few moments. The letters G-Y-A signify German youth activities. And wherever such an organization exists in Germany, you know that there the way of democracy is being taught and encouraged. Our occupation forces are helping out through G-Y-A, developing healthy interests through group handicrafts and hobby projects. A girl by the name of Helga is one example. She was pretty confused when she joined a G-Y-A group. Her father had been very much anti-American and she reflected his ideas. Luckily, she won a trip to Switzerland in a handicraft contest. Once on the trip, Helga learned that the Swiss people and the American women in charge of the tour were very different than her father had pictured non-Germans. Uh, she won't change overnight, but she wants to learn more about the workings of democracy, and her education is continuing through GYA. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of Taxi, starring Dan Daly as Eddie and Colleen Gray as Mary. <laughs> it's a few moments later at Leggett and Millard, Publishers. Eddie Nielsen waits in the reception room while Mary's ushered into the offices of one of the executives. Please sit down, Mrs. Turner. I, I'm Miss Millard. Perhaps I can help you. Oh, thank you. So you've come all the way from Ireland, but you have no idea where your husband is. And I don't have much time, ma'am. I'm only allowed ashore for the day. I'm afraid that at the moment your husband's a long way from here. Out west, I believe. Out west? Uh, and where would that be? Well, it covers a lot of territory, Mrs. Turner. I just don't know where he is. But you must know. It's his book you're publishing. Mrs. Turner, your husband came to us for two chapters of a novel. We liked them well enough to advance him some money. He bought a car and headed out west. We got the third chapter from Albuquerque with a note that he was leaving for Idaho. But you must hear from him. There might be a letter tomorrow or a month from tomorrow. Or he might walk in this very week. There's just no telling. 
what am I going to do? I... I know. It's none of my business, Mrs. Turner, but, well, your husband didn't know you were coming, did he? Perhaps he didn't want you to come. Not want me to come? Why? No doubt he has some very good reason of his own. But he does want me. I know it. You have your passage back to Ireland, haven't you? Wouldn't it be best if you just went and waited for him? Perhaps he's preparing to join you there. I won't. I can't. I know what your feelings must be, but what other choice do you have? I have no choice, have I? Is there anything I can do? You've been very patient, Miss Millard. Thank you. Yes? This is the reception desk, Miss Malloy. Mr. Turner just walked in. Jim Turner here? He brought me a Navajo blanket from New Mexico. That girl, that Irish girl who was just in to see me, is she gone? Oh, yes, Miss Millard. She left just before Mr. Turner got out of the elevator. Oh, I see. Well, send him in. Send Mr. Turner in. you keep telling me is that she was very nice, but what did she say? Uh, Jim's out west somewhere. He... He bought an automobile. He's traveling around the country. An no automobile, he's traveling. Can you take the hint now? He don't want you. That's not so. You don't understand. It's because of the novel he's traveling. You still believe that, huh? Well, you don't have to worry about me anymore, Mr. Nielsen. This is my problem, not yours. Maybe I should have my head examined. Tell me the truth. Does it make sense to you? Uh, does it? You got yourself a job on a ship, you work your way across the ocean washing dishes to find a husband in one day. Husband don't even write to you. Is, is, is that the act of a logical person? Stop anybody in the street, ask the first impartial party. But there's a million people visiting New York every day. They take trolley cars, subways, buses. You? You had to take a taxi. My taxi. Well, there it is. Get in. Well, what are you taking me? Back to the dock, back to the boat. We're through looking. <laughs> There it is, Mrs. Turner. There's your ship. Only I could stay in the country just a little longer. Lady, please, don't prolong the agony. The garment district is burning up. There's fares on every sidewalk. I got a whole day's work to do. So just go, huh? Well, if you'll come aboard, the captain will give you your money. I kissed a goodbye a long time well, ago. You can have it. I don't want it. I give it to you and St. Anthony with my compliments. <gasps> St. Anthony! It's gone. The little statue's gone. Huh? Oh, yeah, I remember. I took it off the seat when we went to that restaurant. I thought somebody might steal it. But, but where did you put it? Well, I was going to put it in the trunk. I don't know. I, I uh, must have left it on the curb. I'm sorry. I wanted to take it back with me. How do you like this for a crazy search? Even St. Anthony bailed out. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Nielsen. Thank you. That's okay, lady. Bye. Uh, lady, your letters. You forgot the box with your letters. At first, they wouldn't let me come on the ship. Well, anyway, uh, here. Oh, thank you. Uh, now, if you'll come with me, the captain will give you your money. I said if you'll come... That basket. What's that in the basket on the bunk? Kevin. Kevin? Who's Kevin? My baby, of course. You never told me you had a baby. Why didn't you tell me? Haven't I burdened you enough with my troubles? How that husband of yours can run around like he does knowing he's got a wife and a kid? But he doesn't know. Why don't he know? I didn't tell him. I, I knew he was struggling, trying to get enough money to bring me myself over here. He'd only have worried all the more. Well, what are you going to do? How are you going to live? I'll go back to Dublin and get a job. And sooner or later, I'm bound to hear from him. Lady, a guy like me, I can get along. I can buck a finance company. I dig up the payments on a cab even if I have to stoop the chisel from passengers. But I'm alone. I don't have no wife or kid to worry about. Oh, please, tis not your concern. What are you going to do if you do get a job? Put him in an orphan asylum? Oh, Mr. Nielsen, I'm very grateful for everything you've done for me. But please, don't be worried. How can I not worry? I got to worry. That's my unfortunate disposition. <laughs> now, you take the baby and come on with me. 
No. You hurry me, Mrs. Turner. Take the baby and come on. We're going to see them immigration people. <laughs> What do you think the immigration man will be saying? We'll find out in about two minutes. See, there's the office. Oh, but my ship's about to sail. I let it sail. But we're breaking the law. So what? Crooks break the law every day. Let a couple honest people take a chance at it. <laughs> How's the kid? You all right? Hey, he's still sleeping. Okay, now just remember what I told you. Those immigration guys are pretty tough. Nothing I can do, Mrs. Turner. We can't help you unless your husband is here in person. No, look, Mac, I explain. He's unavoidably detained. He'll be here tomorrow or the next day. There's not a thing I can do about it. Look, mister, her husband's a citizen. She's legally married to him. That's his kid right here. Sorry. What's the matter? This country's so well off it can't use a couple more decent people? Who was up to guys like you, the Pilgrim Fathers, and still be sitting on Plymouth Rock trying to get in? <laughs> That's right. We're all a bunch of dirty rats. You mind stepping in the other office? Who, me? Uh, you can wait here, ma'am. Do you mind? Oh, no, sir. I don't mind. Uh, this won't take long. All right, Hacky, go on in there. <coughs> Who are you? Edward P. Nielsen, owner and operator of my own cab. Now, what's your connection with that girl? Nothing. I've been driving her around all day. Is that against the law, too? You want to mind your manners, son. You might lose a few teeth. Now, what are you driving her around for? She's looking for her husband. She's a little foreign girl. She's eating her heart out. Oh, uh, what's the use? Another sob story, huh? Yeah, but this one's on the level. Well, suppose she missed her ship. What do you think would happen? How could she miss a ship? It's right there on the dock. Well, just suppose. What am I going to do? Tell her to jump in and swim home? Well, what would you do with her? Well, we'd deport her. Deport her? That is, unless some reliable person came along and we could release her in his custody. Oh, well, look, look, I'm reliable. I'm responsible. I got a big investment in a cab. I'm an owner-operator. What do you want me to do, sign something? Now, wait a minute. Not so fast. <laughs> First, there's a little matter of $500. 500 Oh, in cash, too, I bet. So it don't show on your income tax. That's a pretty fair racket you got. <laughs> you know, son, you are going to lose those teeth. That $500 is a bond. It's like bail to make sure she'll appear at the hearing. Yeah? And there's nothing in it for you? No. Disappointing, isn't it? Yeah, but $500. Where's a guy like me going to get $500? Well, you own a cab. Yeah, I, I own it okay, but I still got 40 more payments to make on it. Well, you put money down, didn't you? You made a lot of payments already, haven't you? Just call the finance company. They'll be glad to give you a loan. Look, mister, every nickel of that down payment was every nickel I ever had in the world. And every month I make a payment, it's like giving them a pint of my own blood. There's a limit. No, I, 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 I couldn't do it. Well, it's up to you. No, I, I, I couldn't. I got a mother. That's how I support her with a cab. I lost a cab, but what'd I do? Ah, I, I work too hard as it is. Besides, You I... uh, can use this phone. I'll uh, go back and see how Mrs. Turner's doing. Oh, this is awful. This is awful. It's awful. Oh, hello, Nielsen. This is Mr. Barker. Uh, I'd like to make a loan, Mr. Barker. $500 against the taxi cab. <laughs> I thought you just said. I thought you just said you'd like to make a loan. Yeah, well, that's what I did say, Mr. Barker. 500 bucks against the cab. $500? How much equity do you think you got? Now, just a minute, Mr. Barker. I got over 2,000 bucks in that cab. I know I rate a $500 loan. And I know all about the refinancing charges and the extra costs and the interest rates. Why, you bird brain, you can't make the payments as it is. Look, this is an urgent matter. So I'm a bird brain, but I got to have the money. So make out the check, Mr. Barker. I'll be there in five or six minutes. We'll talk about it then. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks a lot, Mr. Barker. Here, have a drink of water. You look a little pale. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. I just don't know what to say. Mr. Nielsen invading your home with a baby. And however did you manage it? You mean the secret of my success? I got political pull. I'm a very convincing talker. Talker. But your mother, what will she be saying? Nothing. She likes babies. Be you sure you have room for us? Just don't expect no mansion is all I ask. I got news for you, Mrs. Turner. Everybody in America ain't a millionaire. Well, here's the street. 
Oh, it is a lovely street. It's the crummiest street in Manhattan. Now, we live down there, only I gotta stop here at the garage. You wait here on the sidewalk, I'll only be a minute. Uh, I'll get me suitcase. I'll get the suitcase. You worry about the baby. I gotta put the cab away, see? And you kinda stand around the doorway. There's certain parties hanging around a garage. If they ever find out what I'm doing, they'll let themselves into the grave. <laughs> so wait here. Look who's here. Mr. Nielsen has retired. What do you want? Hi, owner. You make the payment? What's in your business? Yeah, there. Don't duck the question. Did you or did you not? Get out of here, you rummies. Uh, all these months giving us a needle, calling us nasty words. A bunch of no good lazy bums. That's us. Yeah, so yeah. you finally admit it, huh? So it just happens I call Mr. Austin Barker on the phone. He give me all the dope, owner. Yeah, you didn't yeah. even make the payment. In fact, you've made a loan against the hack. You've got some knife, Mr. Nielsen, going around putting up the big front. Yeah, the big book. The five better cap yeah. Yeah. yeah, how yeah, about yeah, that? Shut up, shut up, leave me alone. How about all that big shot stuff, huh? What do you think you're something? Mr. Nielsen. Come on. It's my fault again, isn't it? I could hear them. Never mind. You borrowed the money for my sake. That's how you managed it at the immigration. Oh, Mr. Nielsen, what have I done to now you? Now, listen to me. The best thing to say at a time like this is absolutely nothing. Just silence. I'm a little tired. I'd like to go upstairs and lie down, rest my eyes. So come on. Yeah, it's me, Mom. Oh, well, well. Just look who dropped in, Edward. Mrs. Oliver and Florence. Oh, come in, dear, and say hello. Oh, no. Uh, no. Uh, Mr. Uh, this Nielsen. here, uh, Mom, is a young lady. I brought her home uh, just to live here. Oh, come in, come in. Have a seat. Mother, Mother, look. Now I ask you just to live here, he says. With a, with a baby. On, uh, on second thought, young lady, maybe you want to, uh, to freshen up, huh? Uh, this way, dear. Yes, that's the bedroom. Just in there. Oh, thank you. Well, ain't this nice. Edward, this is Miss Florence Albert and her mother. So what's everybody looking at me like I'm a murderer for? Who'd I kill? Mama, I think we ought to leave. Just a minute. Mrs. Nielsen? Yes, dear? For two hours you've been telling us what a wonder your son is. So quiet, so refined, so unattached. If he's so quiet and refined, why does he bring home... What a... are you arguing for? Just let's leave. Oh, sit down. Everybody sits down. I'll make some tea. Dragging us up here under false pretenses? Telling us this bum was free like the air? Who says I ain't? Mister, you think I am blind? She's got an infant? So what? Is that such a novelty? Oh, I refuse to remain here another instant. Florence, wait for me. <laughs> huh? How do you like the nerve? No shame at all brings us right into the house. This is my house. I do what I want. This is where I live. Two time and cab driver. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Albert. Goodbye, Florence, dear. Call again. Now, what's the idea, Edward? What's the explanation? Please, Mom, not now. I had a terrible day today. Oh, look what you did for the Albert. Who asked him to jump to conclusions? Who invited him here? I told you this morning, Mom. And he's standing here like a big dope. You opened the door and Please, I... Mom, I had a terrible day. I can't take it anymore. Now, sit down, Eddie. Now, what about the young lady and the baby? Don't the baby want some milk or something? I don't know. I'll go ask her. Mrs. Turner? It's okay, Mrs. Turner. They're gone. Maybe you and the baby want... Well, well, well what is it? She's gone. You see what you did? You scared her away. Gone? Who does she, she know? Upstairs? Where's she gonna go? Eddie, who is she? Where? This girl. Where could Where she go? She? Where? Where? I gotta find her, Mama. I, I gotta go find her. Hey, 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 look, look, look. Hi, Yona. You're gonna buy us a I know. He come back to say sorry. Maybe he yeah. wants to borrow some money. No, ride me, please. Not Yonah now. Fellas, fellas, please. Look, I, I want you to help me. Eddie. Oh, sure. Hey, Eddie, you in bad trouble? Yeah. Good. Uh, oh, no, no, look, look, look. That girl you saw me with. She just came out of my house two, three minutes ago. She had a baby in a basket. So what is she, friend, relation? No, she's just a passenger. Beat you for the fare, huh? No, no, I've been driving around all day. See, she's looking for her husband. What is it? 
desertion case? Yeah, I guess so, sort yeah, of. Yeah, so what do you want if I leave her go? I told you she's got a baby. She's walking the streets. Well, what do you got to find her for? Why is she so important? Because it's important to me, that's why. I'm asking you as nice as I know how. I'm asking you please to help me find her. Will you get your cabs? Ten minutes, that's all I have. Oh, sure, sure. Roll out the cabs. I'll waste the company gas, huh? And what about the depreciation? Ten years you've been working for the company, all of a sudden you start about depreciation. What's the matter? Just a minute, just a minute! Now, look, sometimes we horse around, and sometimes we get serious. Yeah. Sometimes you're nice to a fella, sometimes you give him the boots. So now tell me, this is the same little girl that was here before? Yeah, yeah, she's about this big. She's got black hair. She's Irish. Irish? Yeah, she's Irish. Well, come on, you pinheads, let's go! Wait, what are you pushing? In a moment, Act Three of Taxi. An Indiana soldier by the name of Birch Bay, yes, that's his real name, carried a little excess equipment overseas with him to Germany for occupation duty. To be exact, he had four dollars worth of vegetable garden seeds in his duffel bag. You see, Birch had been a star pupil in agricultural extension work and president of his 4-H club for two years. His military police company arrived for duty in the little German village of Hungen. Here, Birch sent out word to the children that he had a job for them. Ninety turned up, and they represented 45 different families. During his off-duty hours, Birch laid out a garden tract on the edge of town in 45 plots, each six by 20 feet. He parceled out the seeds and supervised the planting. An astonishing quantity of vegetables was raised, and something else was raised, too. The morale of all the people in the village who needed not only food for their stomachs, but sustenance for their spirits. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. now for station identification. The curtain rises on Act Three of Taxi, starring Dan Daly as Eddie and Colleen Gray as Mary. The search for Mary and her baby has failed. Eddie and the cab drivers are back in the garage, a little more grim than usual. You know, I turned down too fast whilst I was looking for her. You're the last one in, Amchi. How about it? Did you see her? I guess I drew a blank, Eddie. Same as the others. She's got to be out there somewhere. We looked every block, didn't we? Besides, how far could she walk loaded down with a suitcase? Well, now, where is she? You tell me. Eddie, it can happen. Let's face it. What can happen? What are you talking about? Well, well... The river. After all, Eddie, it's so handy. You're out of your mind. Look, you read about it every day. What are you talking about? She's got a baby. Eddie, read the papers. They always leave the baby somewhere first, like in a doorway in a subway station. She wouldn't do a thing like that. She's too religious. Then it's simple. When they're religious, they leave the baby in a church, in a crypt or something. (laughs) Thanks, Angie. Thanks, you guys. Just read the papers. That's all I can say. me, Holy Mother. Help me to find my baby's father. Help me to make a goal of things. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. So he was right. Oh. Empty, that not that he was right. In church, he said. Mr. Nielsen, please. What's I... the big idea running out of me, pulling a stunt like that? Lower your voice. You're in church. How do you think I fell with the river not two blocks away? Oh, what a terrible... I could have lost my 500 bucks. I could have taken my cab. Stop yelling at me. And see what you've done. The baby's awake. Come on. I wasted enough time. Let's go. I'm not going back with you. They're all done worrying about me. Look, Mrs. Tyner. We've imposed enough, Kevin and me. It got me two hands. I can find a job. Look, Mrs. Tyner. I want you to come home. I'm asking you, but please. You shouldn't mind me. Everything I say, I mean the opposite. So come on. Come on home, huh? Well, 
Well, first I must light the candles. Now, this one is for Kevin. And this one is for Jim. And this one, this is for you. Thanks. A fellow like me, he needs all the help he can get. And it does help. You'd be surprised. Plenty of milk in the icebox. Don't call that lovely thing an icebox. It's an electric refrigerator. Same thing. Hey, Mom, you got a pants you can warm the milk and show how the stove works, huh? Oh, I do it, Mrs. Turner. You go back to Kevin, dear. Change him. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Newton. Oh, it's nothing. Just keep out of the way, Eddie. Go look at television or something. Mr. Nelson, why did you give me all that blarney coming home? Running down your house. Why, man, you're rich. Some rich. Well, you got hot water piped directly into the sink and a fridge just crammed with food. You've got a lovely stove. And, and just look at that television set. Why, where I come from, some people never even saw such things. Some of the things you see on television, they're better off. <laughs> Mom, she thinks we got a mansion here. Eddie, listen. What? Oh, nothing. Only listen. Don't get sore and tall. I just make a couple of suggestions. What kind of suggestions? Eddie, don't I know you? Don't I always know what's going on in your heart? So? Oh, she's a wonderful girl. But what do you want me to do about it? Oh, nothing. Only don't get excited. She's married. I told you she's got a husband. Husband? Where is he? Who knows him? Who's seen him? I don't want to talk about it. It's crazy. All the time you're trying to get me married. Now look, as soon as the baby's bottle is warm, you bring it into her. Why? For what? Oh, it's a good excuse, see? So you can have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Oh, I don't say you should reach an understanding right this minute, but little by little... Mom, always making deals. For Pete's sake, you don't know what you're talking about. Suppose she don't want me. She don't want you. Yeah, Beatrice Fairfax, expert on love and romance. <laughs> what makes you think she want to bother with me? Well, what's wrong with you? What's wrong? Take a look. I'm some dreamboat. Tyrone Power, scared to death. <laughs> You're ugly. Why, you were the most beautiful baby in the world. Ah, and those blonde curls you used to have. Okay, Mom. Give me a kiss. You go on back in the kitchen. Who's going back in the kitchen? I'm going out. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, well, that's what you think. I'm playing cards with Mrs. Jorgensen. Well, you're wasting your time because nothing's going to happen. All right, so it won't. You got objections? I should play a little pinochle. Mrs. Turner, you want to look at the television? Thank you. I'd love to. Uh, in just a minute. Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen, this is Gardner Jenkins once again, bringing you an on-the-spot coverage of today's best human interest story. And we're speaking to you from East 51st Street, just across from the world-renowned St. Patrick's Cathedral. Hey, you remember that place, St. Patrick's Cathedral? Oh, my. Well, this statue I'm holding, folks, is a statue of St. Anthony, the saint who, among other things, is the patron of those who have lost something and wish to find it again. But today, St. Anthony himself was lost. Hey, come here, Mr. Steiner, quick. They got the statue on television. What did you say? The statue on television from the hawk shop. Well, instead of being in heaven, he, or at least his statue, was found standing deserted on a curbstone here in Manhattan. How did it come to be here? Well, perhaps someone in our sidewalk audience here can suggest an answer. Oh, my goodness. What about you, sir? How do you think St. Anthony came to be here? Well, I suppose there are a dozen explanations, but right offhand... That's Jim. That's my husband. This is Tiny. Well, you were about to say? Well, after all, St. Patrick's Cathedral is just across the street. It is, Jim. Maybe St. Anthony here was sent down from the main office to check up on the branches, huh? Well, that's a very interesting answer, sir. Would you give us your name and address, please? Well, not that it matters... James Turner, 39 Sutton Place South. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Turner. And our sponsors are going to send you a whole case of Snappy, America's most beloved breakfast food. Now, that lady over there will be... 39 down. Sutton Place South. Did you hear that? He must have moved. Now, wait a minute, Mrs. I'll Turner. I'll go get Kevin. But, but look, he couldn't be your husband. I told you he's out west. You don't think I'd recognize my own man when I see him? Well, maybe. Maybe you wouldn't. You know him for seven days on Ireland. It's a year later in New York. Will you please hurry and take me to him? Well, it... Do you want to go right now? Yes, yes, of course I do. Yeah, but you, you ain't for the baby yet. I can do it in the cab. Now, wait, uh, Miss Turner, just a second. Mr. Nielsen, you've done so much for me. Would you please do just this one thing more and take me to him? Please? Okay. I'll get the cab out of the garage. <laughs> Well, there it is. 39 South. Oh, my. It's 
quite grand looking, isn't it? Uh, would you mind waiting here with the baby? I'll go in first and see if he's home. Sure. Sure, go ahead. Good evening, Mrs. Turner. Miss Millard. Yes, we meet again. But it was Jim I asked for. My husband. I told the butler. Yes, I know. I'm sorry you found him, Mrs. Turner, and I'm sorry you're here. I gave you good advice when I said to go back to Ireland. But if he's here, why did you tell me he's out west? I thought he was. He walked into the office right after you left. Then why didn't you tell him I'd been there? How could you keep it from him? Why? But I did tell him. You couldn't have told him. He would have looked for me. He would have found me. Perhaps he really didn't want to find you. Or perhaps you didn't want him to find me. I see it now, Miss Millard. You got rid of me because you want Jim for yourself. No. No, you're quite wrong. Once I had Jim to myself, Mrs. Turner, I was married to him for more than three years. That's more of your lies. He, he would have told me. And, and if it were true, yes, I... Yes, you'd have never married him. Your religion wouldn't have permitted it. That's why Jim never told you. That's the sort of man he is, Mrs. Turner. That's why you're far better off without him. No, you're making it up. I, I don't believe you. Jim's not like that. He loves me. Jim always has good intentions, Mrs. Turner, but he's weak. Always was and always will be. You see, he's broke now. He's given up the book. Do you know what he's doing here this evening? He's telling me he's going to ask you for a divorce. He wants me to marry him again. I still don't believe you. I came here to find Jim, and I'm not leaving till I do. Then go ahead, Mrs. Turner. He's in the study down the hall. He is yours if you want him. I certainly do. I'll go right up. Well, how did it go? Grand. Just grand. You mean it? Oh, he was so happy to see me. Yeah, well, why ain't he with you? Well, I, I, I told him I had a surprise. I, I didn't say it was Kevin. I, I just said I had a surprise to show him. Yeah. He lives in his joint? Oh, well, it, it's just temporary. Do you know who was who up there? Miss Millard. Who? Miss Millard from the publishers. And you know what? She's the cause of the whole trouble. She never told him a word about me. She wanted him for herself, but... Well, she just didn't know me, Jim. <laughs> I soon told her. Well, I... Uh, I'll take the baby now. Well, here, uh, let, me, let me help you. Oh, no, no, no. I, I can manage fine. The suitcase, too. Uh, the lift man in the lobby will take care of it. Well, goodbye, Mr. Nielsen. Goodbye. Uh, I'll be telephoning to you just the moment we're settled down. Yeah. I, I want Jim to meet you and your mother. Oh, sure. And, uh, Miss Turner, I... I'm glad this all worked out for you. I'm glad you got what you wanted. Thank you. I'll be remembering you in my prayers. Yeah, you do that. God bless you, Mr. Nielsen. Hello, very ma'am. Can I help you? You going back up? No, n no, thank you. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll just sit here for a spell. Yes, ma'am. Just, just for a moment, and it'll be on you there. Come on, get in the cab. Mr. Newton. Give me a phony story like that. Come on, get in. Just be careful of the baby. I'll take the suitcase. What are you taking me? Oh, why don't you just leave that to the driver? What? It's so different, you look. I've never seen you looking like this. Why? What's the difference? Why, Mr. Nielsen, you're smiling. Our stars will return in a moment. This is really a story about two people. One is Chief Petty Officer Harry Frame, a veteran Navy electrician who saw lots of action in the war in the Pacific. The other is Mrs. Sadaya Ishiwata of Tokyo. 
Mrs. Ishiwata turned her home and her fortune over to 53 boys and girls of all ages who were orphaned by World War II. And Chief Frame devoted his off-duty hours to helping this tiny Japanese lady. He organized his friends into work teams, and because of their work, the home took on a bright new look. New panes of glass were installed, a new girl's dormitory was built, and twice a week, a Navy truck rolled up with leftover food, writing paper, worn-out clothing, and other contributions from the men. Chief Frame made it his private project toward better relationships between people of two different countries, and it's paid off in mutual goodwill. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now, Mr. Cummings with our stars. And please step forward, Dan Daly and Colleen Gray, for a small token of our appreciation. I do hope your taxi meter isn't still running, Dan. No, I'm through cheating, Irving. <laughs> I could have told you that, Dan. Now tell me, what's doing out of 20th Century Fox these days? Well, we're in the same old rut. Turning out great pictures. And with some fine acting. I'll bet you'll be nominated for an Academy Award again this year, Dan. No, oh, not a chance. I wasn't in one costume picture this year. <laughs> well, why do you have to have a costume? Huh? Did you see 20th Century Fox's picture, The Robe, in Cinema Scope? Starring Richard Burton, Gene Simmons, and Victor Mature? Yes, it's a wonderful picture, Dan. Yeah, and did you see a preview of Prince Valiant starring James Mason, Janet Leigh, and Robert Wagner? Yes, I did. Well, there you are. You either have to wear a Roman toga or a Buster Brown haircut. <laughs> Somehow, Dan, I just can't see you in a Buster Brown haircut. Well, that's one of the reasons I didn't get the part of Prince Valiant. <laughs> oh, better luck next year, Dan. Uh, now, Irving, how about next week's play? That's what I say, Gully, and how about it? Because we're going to present one of the greatest personalities on the screen today. Metro Goldwyn Mayer's glamorous Esther Williams. And we've chosen one of her gayest, most delightful screen successes. Skirts Ahoy. Co-starring in his original role will be popular Barry Sullivan. And they will recreate this romantic comedy for you on the radio theater next week. I will be listening, Irving. Good night. Good night. Good night. And you'll find a taxi at the door. Heard in our cast tonight were Edith Angold as Mrs. Nielsen, Jack Crucian as Rico, Eddie Marr as Chick, Jeff Menken as Amchi, Yvonne Patey as Miss Millard, Bill Conrad as the immigration officer, and Stephen Dunn, Lillian Randolph, Bill Johnstone, Herb Butterfield, George Pembroke, Pauline Drake, Ellen Cleave, Jonathan Hall, and Leon Ledoux. by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.